Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome back um, to the Shield of Strength YouTube channel. Um, we are diving in again. Um, earlier today I made another video um, about the Armageddon, the West Bank, being attacked and um, and how that all fits into Revelations, um, the, the, the time of Armageddon, the, the Valley of Armageddon the Jezreel Hills, um, all those wrapped into this video that I previously posted. It was called The Breaking News, Armageddon, The Bible, and The Proof. Go ahead and check out that video on this channel. And so in, in correlation with that, a little bit of a more shorter video, a little bit more in-depth um, about what this video was actually getting at. So um, in that previous video, I had previously looked at the wine press and how the wine press was stated in Revelations 14:20. In King James Version, the Revelations 14:20 says, "And the wine press was trodden outside the city, and blood came out of the wine press, even unto the horses' bridles." Please mark that down. We'll get to that in just a minute. Key word: the horses' bridles. For the space of a thousand and six hundred furlongs. Okay, I'll get into the measurement of that exactly here in just a minute. And the pri and the wine press was trodden without the city, and there came out blood from the wine press, even unto the bridles of the horses, and far as a thousand and six hundred furlongs, and the grapes in the wine press were trampled and crushed outside of the city, and the blood poured from the wine press, reaching up to the horses' bridles for a distance of 1,600 stadia. And the grapes in the wine press were trodden outside of the city, and the blood poured from the wine press. So this is all talking about going from a city to the horses' bridle. Very few battles actually go from the city to the horse's bridle. Very few, if not any, battles has ever happened where it's specifically shown that it goes from the city to the horse's bridle. Death all the way between there and there. And since we are just in the early stages, this is something to definitely be aware of. So now, looking into the horse's bridle, 1420 Revelations. Finally, in this chapter, John records, Then the press was trampled outside the city, and the blood flowed out of the press up to the horse's bridles for about 180 miles. That's just about the same distance as it is from um, Edom, or Edom, or um, outside of Jerusalem, the city of Jerusalem, where human sacrifices happen in the Old Testament. Or, not human sacrifice, but... Um, sacrifices. I think it was more human sacrifices. I can get to that here in just a minute. Um, and so outside of that was was um, Edom or Jerusalem outside of that area up to Jezreel. And that distance is 180 miles. Now, commentators generally agree that the city in question is Jerusalem. It is called the Great City. In Revelations 11:8, as well as Sodom and Egypt, where also their Lord was crucified. The reason the wicked are destroyed outside of the city is that this is where the accursed and unclean things are taken for disposal. For example, the clean or the valley of Hinnom outside of Jerusalem is where human sacrifices take place in Old Testament times. It is a burning uh, trash dump in Jesus' day, even the carcasses of sacrificial animals, whose blood the high priest carries into the Holy of Holies on the Day of Atonement, are carried outside the city walls and burned. So, in this, we can take a grain of salt, but mainly what I'm focusing on here is 180 miles. Now, as we look at where the battle is going on, in my previous maps, I've shown this particular map here. This is currently where the action is going on and going down at. 
So we can see that there's Gaza as the number one hit target. Um, where four and five are at is the general area of Ed Edom or Edom, E D O M. And where six and seven are at at the top is Jezreel or you got it, Armageddon, the Valley of Armageddon or Megiddo, or also known as the Horse's Bridle. We're going to get to that just in a second here. And so, as we continue, we're going to see that a lot of the majority of the attacks are happening um, in the red areas and less in the um, pinkish areas. Um, more of the attacks are more centralized within the West Bank um, and in that particular area. Keep in mind that this particular map here, let's take a look at um, a horse's bridle, for instance. Let's just take a look at, at a horse's bridle real quick here. So this is what they call a horse's bridle. Very few know exactly what this is. I, I, wanna, I want us to focus on, on the ropes, okay? Let's focus on the leathers here, on the bridle. Not so much the horse, although the horse is a really nice looking horse. Um, let's look at the bridles. See how it kind of crosses over the top of the ears? And then it crosses down as a straight line all the way down to the mouth. And then it goes over the nose band and then you have a bit underneath the chin. Um, and then of course the reins. Now, keeping in mind of the throat lash, Okay, the throat lash, the bridle, the horse's head. Okay, the horse's head. If you were to put this into a, let's say, a 2D or a 1D image, it would come out um, pixelated. And if you've ever seen a pixelated picture, it does not look like, you know, something rounded or 3D or, you know, in reality picture. It looks pixelated. And if you were to see this image, you wouldn't think anything of it. But take a look. In yellow, do you see a horse's bridle? Do you see a horse's bridle? See the lines crossing here at the top, covering the ears, covering in front of the ears. The horse's nose coming down around the tip here. Then, of course, the long band going down to the front. This is going to the horse's bridle. Now, this is a long distance. It's exactly 180 and 200 miles where this river, this this river bend here that runs down between this that creates this what appears to be the horse's bridle. Now within that, the wine press was trodden outside the city. Okay, let's take a look. Outside the city of Jerusalem. Okay. If you were to step back, take away the, the names of this, and you see the coloration, right? Do you see the coloration of where the attacks are taking place? Outside of the city, when you spill something outside of the city, or you spill something, it instantly spreads, right? Look at the coloration below Jerusalem up to the West Bank area. Now, within that, we're going to be taking a look at the wine press even unto the bridles of the horses. Okay. Horses bridle up here to the top where that is located. So now, within the attacks being centrally located um, in Gaza, West attacks are going all the way up to Haifa. All the way up to Haifa. And there is 
there is blood running from the blood will run from the um, where Hamas is at, where the terrorists are at, is basically right on this line. They're all on this line. Um, and God will create that bloodline to go from the horse's bridle to the top all the way down to the city gates of Israel. Now, what that has to do with where we've been, let's take a look real fast. Let's backtrack or go back in the past to where we've been. 1820, bubonic plague. 1920, the Black Plague. Uh, actually, 1820, I think it was the Spanish flu. Then the 1920s, the Black Plague. Then 2020, you got it right, Corona. So, um, with that being said, those are the plagues. Those are the plagues. Pestilence. Okay and bad economies one world religions currency stuff like that hasn't happened yet but we are seeing the signs the sun being blackened out who will see that sign the country that stays and protects israel of course will see the sign first who protects israel as a world power and that's the u.s the U.S. sees this sign first. October 14th, 2023, the sun will be blackened out by the moon, and behind the moon will be a fire ring, or a ring of fire eclipse. Very unusual, very rare, very uncommon um, at this type of magnitude. And only westerly available to be seen by the United States. This is a sign showing that the sun will be darkened. There will be blood running for 180 miles from the city all the way to the horse's bridles. Not to mention... The Euphrates River drying up, preparing the way for the uh, kings of the uh, south, west, east, and north. Basically, the kings of the north will come marching through here, through this Euphrates River, because it'll be dried up. The book of Revelation indicates that there will be seven final plagues in the end of times. Not that we're in those seven plagues. We may have very only just touched the surface of the first plague. Six more to go. Five more to go. Nobody really knows. Coronavirus is pretty big. Um, a lot of people, a lot of people felt the impacts of that. So um, the other New Testament scriptures indicate that people living at that time who are not true Christians will experience the consequences of these plagues. So if you're not a Christian, you're not right with God, well then you're, you, would ex, you would experience this. Um, and we'll do, we'll, I'll show you how to get right with God at the end of this so you don't have to worry about ever seeing these plagues, although we are seeing some of them right now. Um, that who are not in that are who are not Christian will experience these consequences as plagues. The last days refer to the period preceding the second coming of Jesus Christ, where plagues, wars, and natural disasters will intensify, leading to the ultimate judgment of all humanity. Keep in mind, we've got the red heifers. We've got the third temple being built. Um, we've got 
Um, earthquakes that just happened um, yesterday and today. Yesterday, a 6.4 earthquake in Afghanistan that killed over 2,500 uh, Afghanis. And is this all a coincidence that it just happened so? No, it's not. It's actually written in the Bible under prophecy 2,000 and 2,000 and years more than that in the Old Testament that these things would come to pass and that they, that they would happen. Um, if you are interested in this type of information, please do not hesitate to follow, share, and subscribe. I uh, have a lot more information about this, um, and I do my best to try to show proof and evidence about what's going on. And very interesting connections and case um, studies that we could look at ourselves, things that might interest you, um, interest others, um, and for those that, that may not believe, to lead them to believe. Um, so let's go ahead and make sure that you're right with God. It's really not that hard. Jesus did all the hard work. It's super easy for you, me, and anybody else to get right with the Lord and to accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. So let's go ahead and um, get that right with the Lord now. Okay. So um, we're going to go ahead and follow this one here. And you can just go ahead and repeat after me. I'll do it step by step. Feel it in your heart. Believe it 100% that it is true and real. And that you accept the fact that Jesus Christ died on the cross for your sins, for my sins, for all of humanity's sins, so that the day when all this pain and suffering ends, Jesus Christ's name is above all every other name. Jesus Christ's name is above cancer, above depression, above suicide, above um, divorce, above um, all other names. And this is the only name that you need to accept in your life. This is, the, this is the main purpose of why you are here, why I'm here on earth, why anybody is here on earth. And it is to live our life, go through what we need to go through, come to a free will, our own free will, understanding and acceptance of Jesus Christ and what, what God, Yahweh, did for us so that we could be with Yahweh and God in heaven with his son, Jesus Christ. So let's go ahead and follow me, please. With your heart open and your eyes and ears on the Lord. Dear Heavenly Father, I realize that I am a sinner and have broken your laws. I understand that my sin has separated me from you. I am sorry, and I ask you to forgive me. I accept the fact that your Son, Jesus Christ, died for me, was resurrected, and is alive today. And here's my prayers. I now open my heart's door and invite Jesus in to become my Lord and my Savior. I give him total control and ask that he would rule and reign in my heart so that his perfect will would be accomplished in my life. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. All right, if you had just prayed that prayer, congratulations. You are on your way to heaven. Um, you are you have you have accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. You have broken every chain that has ever been impacted uh, from your family, from your ancestors, from anybody. You are now your own creation that God has created and that God has allowed you to be through the acceptance of your free will through His Son Jesus Christ. Because you have accepted Jesus Christ. You have separated yourself from everything that you've done in your past. You have become what God has always wanted you to be, a child of God.
So welcome to the family. And uh, again, um, don't stop here. Keep going. There's a lot of other literature, a lot of other videos out there that will strengthen your, your journey with Christ and get you right with Christ. So um, please share this video, subscribe, like, comment, let me know what you think, and uh, more videos like this to come. Thanks for watching. Until next time, have a great day.